Hello! In this video, we will review a few pretty powerful capabilities of Oracle Analytics when it comes to aggregating values in a data visualization. So in particular, we will first see how to aggregate attribute columns, then how to change the aggregation on a calculation in a data visualization. We will see how to influence the aggregation for a table total. And finally, we will see how to unaggregate a metric column. So for this demo, we'll use our sample sales data. It's a file that holds 9,000 rows of order lines, summing up to $8.5 million sales. And let us start by how to simply aggregate an attribute column with a single click. So let me bring customer ID here in a table. I have a lot of customer IDs in this data set with 9,000 rows, and I would like to get a count distinct of customers easily with a single click. So if I simply right click on the customer ID object in the grammar pane, I see an aggregate menu, and that aggregate menu offers me different ways of aggregating this attribute. So let me select count distinct. And here we go, we have 2,681 distinct customer IDs in this data set. So naturally, as we add any dimension into the Vs, the count distinct aggregates properly. I can even add a total to the table. It'll show me the total count distinct, even if I bring a dimension where customers may belong to two categories at once, like product category. Any single customer may be present in multiple product categories, and yet the grand total keeps showing a proper count distinct, not just the sum of the different product categories. So I can easily combine this metric with any other metrics, just like any object. It's a count distinct of the attribute. And I can even with a single click on the object, save this to my calculation, my custom calculation. So if I click on this, here is the formula. It appears in my calculation. It's a specific syntax that came here automatically. I can reuse this syntax in other calculations myself. For example, let's calculate average sales by customer simply by dividing sales by the number of customers which we just calculated so sales divided by and here is our syntax that we just got and obviously that calculation can be added to any vis in oec and behaves like any other metric table or any vis so here's an example that i fast forward so what we've done here is started from a attribute with a single click created a count distinct aggregation for it save that aggregation as a custom calculation and reuse it subsequently in other calculation. Now let's move on to the second aggregation capability I wanted to highlight. I have just created exactly the same table here with customer segment and sales metric, which is an additive aggregation sum. Let me bring the sales metric a second time in the table for the example. How can we modify the aggregation rule of sales here without editing the data set? If we go to the Vs properties in the Numbers tab, for each column, so let's go to the second one here, we see an aggregation method property where we can set which aggregation rule will be applied to this metric for that Vs. So in our case, let us pick average. And now the second sales column turns into average sales. And this is average sales by record in the data because we didn't specify anything in the by close. So that 944 here is a division of 8.5 million divided by 9,000 rows that we have in the data set, and that's 944. So that is average by record. If we wanted average by customer, we edit the by close here, and we could pick up any column in the data set and select it as a detailed grain for the average. So in our case, let me pick customer ID, and this is going to calculate an average of revenue by customer ID for each customer segment. So if you think about it, this is exactly the same calculation that we've already done manually above. So when I click on the different customer segments, you can see they have exactly the same value. Only this time, we didn't build a calculation. We instead set up the aggregation of sales to be averaged by customer ID. So here again, the aggregation we have set up, which is average by customer is then independent of any dimension or any other metric that a user can bring in the visualization. If I change the dimensions here, the calculation will provide with the right average by customer. Let us now move on to a third capability of aggregations I'd like to highlight, the ability to influence the aggregation of a table or pivot table total row. So let me open a new canvas and build a table with number of customers, sales, and let's say cities. 
So here are a list of 133 cities. You can see the total at the bottom right of the screen. And I can obviously sort this one way or another. Let me add a total, but let me have a total at the top of the report so we can see it. Actually, let me represent this as a bar chart as well. So I've fast forwarded the bar chart creation, exactly the same, and I'm sorting it by sales decreasing. So this 8.5 million here is the sum of all the sales of all the cities. So it's really the sum of all the numbers that show in that column. But what if we wanted to keep the sum of sales by city, which we have in the table, but instead of showing a grand total with a sum of all these numbers, have a grand total showing an average of these 133 numbers. So we can easily do this if we go to the Viz Properties Numbers tab, there is a total aggregation property that we can use to override the current aggregation rule for the metric, but that override will only apply to the table total rule. So let me pick average in our example, and here is 63,909.77, which is the average city sales value. And that number should be the same as the one that we would get if we call statistics average, so reference line, on the bar chart. And indeed, 63,909.77, that's the average city sales. The same mechanism applies as well to calculated metrics like the count distinct of customer ID. What if we wanted the average number of customers per city? Here's the 46.53 customers. So this is the average number of distinct customers that we have across our cities. And I could represent this as a percent of total. There are different representation possible in the pivot table. So here we have seen how to change the aggregation rule of the total table or a pivot table. Now let us look at the last capability I wanted to highlight here, how to easily treat a metric as an attribute. For this, let me build a bar chart with a number of distinct customer as a y-axis, and let me pretend I want to have the different number of customers by distinct discount rates that we are applying. So if I drag discount rate in the x-axis, my bar chart will show a grouping of discount rate, a binning, so I can edit these bins. In this case, I see 15, but I can group this. But what I would like instead is to show distinct values of discount rate and how many customers we have for each. The problem is I can't do this easily because discount rate automatically aggregates. In this case, it averages. So here's a 4% average discount rate. But if I look at the aggregate right-click menu for discount rate, I see at the bottom of the list that treat as attribute option. And if I select this, this is going to unaggregate discount rate and instead show me the distinct value. There are 84 distinct value of discount rate in my data set among the 9,000 rows. So now I can visualize the distinct number of customers by these distinct discount rates that we have unaggregated. And here's the table. And I can visualize this as a bar chart and I have the full granular distribution here of the number of customers by respective discount rates, which looks like the binning bar chart, but with a higher level of detail. And that's what I was looking for. Just like we saw earlier, I can also easily save this to my own custom calculation. And this is going to persist the custom formula to and aggregate discount rates. So here is the syntax. I don't recommend you're trying to use this syntax manually. Instead, use it by creating calculation like I'm showing right now. And I can reuse that object in a distinct viz to measure, for instance, in this case, profit by distinct discount rates. So this is showing me quantity ordered in y-axis and profit in x-axis and dots represent the distinct discount rates. So I can see, for instance, that there is a group of distinct discount rates that generate a higher profit. That's interesting by itself. And we generated this insight by treating a metric as an attribute just with a single click and then plotting it against other metrics. So in this video, we've seen how to easily set a count or count distinct aggregation on an attribute. We've seen how to change aggregation rules on metrics and group by levels. We have seen how to change aggregation rules on pivot table totals, and we have seen how to treat a metric as an attribute. Hopefully this was helpful to you. Thanks for watching the video.